Welcome to Finding Certainty with your host and U.S. Army veteran, Patrick Lang. Over the next hour, you'll learn from Patrick and his expert guests how to attract more certainty into your business and your life. Now, here is your host, Patrick Lang. Welcome to Finding Certainty. If you're a new visitor, thanks for stopping by. If you're a uh, repeat listener, we appreciate your patronage. Always enjoy spending our Friday mornings with you, unpacking this important topic of how to create and develop more certainty in our lives. I have a very special guest today, Mr. Eric Zender. He's an author, a lecturer, and a an expert in language. We're going to be talking today about how we can create greater certainty in, in our lives and in the lives of others through the language that we use. We're going to be talking about the power of language. In fact, uh, Mr. Zander goes so far as to say that quantum intelligence and the use of language is more powerful. He believes it will even outperform artificial intelligence. That's a pretty bold claim, Eric. I look forward to Getting into that with you. We've we got to catch you in on, on, on this in a big way because we all need to get saved from this. this is what it is. <laughs> Excuse me. That was. Anyway, so we, uh, I always start out the show sharing two reasons why I've invited this specific guest to join me. Uh, first is because, as you all know, we're constantly looking at certainty from different angles. We've had multiple different guests looking at it from our the from a fitness standpoint, relationship standpoint, business standpoint, and more. And Eric's expertise, as I said, is in language and how that can impact and affect our the certainty in our lives as well. He's also a master builder. His family had a master uh, was a ma were, were master builders building homes for many years. So he has some uh, valuable business insights as well that he can share with us. Obviously, this is Voice America Business, so maybe we'll look a little bit at the business side of language as well. So, Eric, thanks for being here with us on Finding Certainty. Well, uh, let's um. Uh, 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 the the greatest language philosopher probably ever and of the 20th century was Ludwig Wittgenstein, and he wrote a great book called On Certainty. And it's uh, changed all of philosophy. Changed, uh, Google used it as part of his um, key on game theory. But um, the, the couple key things that he said, and they're really quick, and you say, oh, wow. He said, look, what words mean ultimately are, are, are not grounded in words or pictures, but what people show you in their three-dimensional living. So if a person says, for instance, um, I'm going to meet you on time at 10.30, but they show up at 11.30, and they do it over and over and over, you can one day conclude they don't quite have the same idea of time that you do. And so uh, he said you cannot just have views and tell people views are just words. You, that means that an information age, you just can't give them information. Ultimately, people give you attention. That's one of the main ways of three dimensional living. They give you relationship. They converse with you and they go back and forth. And they, there's something more he said. They they usually have a larger purpose. So um, that, what he calls that is that words are players in a game. He says words do not exist just as words in themselves. And that was his big turn. He says that studying words or thoughts or ideas in themselves, it was, was a wrong turn. That's not correlated to three-dimensional reality, okay? So in three-dimensional reality, it says words go with a practice, a human-to-human -human practice. And then even more, people have larger-scale, what he calls, games, that they want to have a project or a purpose that they're after. He says, well, that's like three-in-one categories. Does that make sense? So think of this. Uh, he, uh, the definition of a concept then becomes a triadic. A specific line of thought that makes sense, the identities make sense. You then add a human to human, something you do in the human body and uh, with human relationships. And then you interact with some portion of three dimensional reality to complete complete patterns. So if you're walking from here to the, the door to the car, that's a pattern you're completing. But see what you got? The internal life, which we call verticals, plus the horizontal human to human relation 
plus interact with three-dimensional nature or the creation. Now, uh, there was a question uh, when I was at uh, the hardest class years and years ago at the University of California, Irvine, which was offered by Dr. Lewis Froman, who had a PhD from Yale, and, and we hit it off. I, I, he, he and I studied fundamental language theory together and for many courses. Now, he said, are things what they are, are things what they seem? He says, if things are only what they seem, it may be very uncertain. That's specifically something he said about certainty all those hmm. years ago. He says, on this question, are things really what they are, or are they just what they seem going on? He says, everything uh, rises or falls. Now, we live in a world of simulated reality, about artificial uh, reality, right? And yeah. guess what? It's simulated. Is it really what, is that really interaction with 3D reality? Is anyone giving you attention? Are they giving you, I said, you know, uh, lo uh, uh, love is special attention and honor is undivided attention, okay? So, uh, and this goes into quantum theory. In the quantum thinking, uh, it goes like this. And uh, the sp your very specific thinking and giving of yourself puts you in a different space. If you have somebody continually gives you eye contact, gives you energy, continually speaks to you, um, you can feel the energy. It's not just a matter of uh, endorphins, by the way. They're, they're actually, their energy flow is starting to intersect yours. Now, this language is personal, but to, to round it out, it now has to become practical. You're going to do something that is beneficial to the human body. And finally, it's purposeful. So now we're back to the three again, pr personal, practical, purposeful. And one of the things Wittgenstein was saying is that you have to have all three to have certainty. And so if someone is like giving you words, words, pictures, and good ones, even good thinking, but they never put it into practice. It's not, it's not certain, my friend. And you can have a government bureaucracy say, we're going to do this, 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 this. But what happens when you check the books and it didn't work out? Well, okay, the practice part failed. It's like a triathlon. You have to play in all three parts of the triathlon. Uh, so that, these are the beginnings. Uh, he asked that question. I'm the only student who ever answered it. I said, you got on that question, are things what they are or things what they just be, just what they seem and they could fail? I said, they're not things, that's the key. We're talking about a conversation of words, and here's the first step. Is somebody actually giving you attention? Are they actually talking to you and with you? Okay, that's the first step. But even that, could that would be a great first third of the first triathlon, but there comes a day where you say, well, we, what do we do human to human? And what do we do about jobs? What do we do about relationships? We've got to put some body into it not thought body and but practice. even after that one day you, you know you get married you want to build something in life or you want to do what you're doing reach the world and help people or do what i do i'm trying to help with these you know books on education for the young what's your purpose now that's kind of like eve coming out of the side of adam it's like oh this isn't just local working body now we're interacting with the with nature which i call the first sphere and we start building the great enterprises in all the spheres, you know, media, business, uh, uh, you know, uh, sports, all kinds of spheres. So now watch what you got. Uh, verticals, horizontal, sphere, sphere building. It's really quite beautiful. You think about it. Um, so here's now in my own work the, the, on uh, art of, you know. Uh, so Eric, let me catch you off. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Eric, Thank let you. me catch yeah. off for a minute. I want to jump into what you do, but before we go there, we always start out getting to know you a little bit and your background. Um, I know you went to California, uh, UC Irvine, um, and then you eventually ended up at Yale. And, and speaking of of um, language and fundamental uh, language and, and being, I mean, you were mentored by two of the most world, most widely renowned professors. I mean, Dr. Paul, Paul Homer was a mentor to you, and you actually worked as a page for Dr. Roland Baton. He's cons many consider him the single greatest professor in all of Yale history, if I'm not mistaken. 
I mean, what that must have had an extraordinary impact on you. We talk a lot on my show about the power of mentorship and and so forth. You found this love at UC Irvine, and then you went to Yale Divinity School and were mentored by these extraordinary professors and this uh, really world's greatest um, Kierkegaard yeah, and, and and I'm carrying on their expositor, work. right? I mean, and then you, now you're carrying on their work, but. What lesson did you learn from these gentlemen that you feel has impacted your life's work? I mean, well, is there one um, that stands out to you? Do, do, do we do we sort of tell the story of what it was like to be mentoring, or, we, or do we go straight to the lessons? I would say, go ahead and share the story first, and then let's get into a so, lesson. So, so after um after being the number eight student uh, in my college at U University of California, Irvine, I spent four and a half years serving at an orphanage, Sunshine Acres Shelter's Home. Uh, in Mesa, Arizona, and Grandma Dingman uh, was as closest to a Mother Teresa I'd ever seen. She'd raised a thousand kids as twice Mother of the Year in Arizona. And, wow! Uh, so I served there four and a half years, and then uh, I called my. Uh, I I said I feel I want to study under a specific man, Dr. Roland Bain. I always was always a top history student, and uh, he was um, he was a. a the greatest of spiritual, uh, it's not just spiritual, it's the traces of history through all the great names, but per, certainly with a, a spiritual uh, emphasis on it. And I knew he was the greatest, and I wanted to study for him. So uh, I called Lewis, Froman, Dr. Froman, you know, I, I've, I've served the orphanage here. You know, you, we and I, we studied fundamental language. I want to go study under this guy. And so he wrote my recommendations. He said, Eric, I'm, I'm going to send, I'm going to get you there. He said, but, um, I'm not doing it so you get a, a, a nice Yale image. It says, I, I'm inviting you to invite, be in what I was, a, a centuries-old tradition of community that first-rate thinkers pursued the answering the hardest questions. That's pretty beautiful. That's why I went. So I anyway, uh, uh, it, it, so it, this is a marvelous story because most of your listeners, uh, I'm able to take you back to the before my my parents, the grandparent age. He, Dr. Dr., uh, um, he, he was the he was both the great historian. Uh, uh, he he'd been a full professor since 1919. Wow! He, and he was he became one at age 19. Uh, so I go there to Yale though, and I find out he's retired now. So well, man, that's who I came to study under. So I go. So the first week, my wife and I go to a church, Trinity Evangelical Free Church. I never I just picked out a church. I said, well, I I know what I prayed. I I got. Accepted, you know, so I wonder what's going to happen. Now you can't see him at all, right? Well, as I'm leaving the church, this lady comes up to me in middle. She was she was not uh, she's not young. She wasn't old either. And taps me on the shoulder. Says, "Young man, I was young man." <laughs> and he <laughs> says, "If he says you're the young man to be Roland Bayton's live-in page," I mean, this is totally off the blue. She didn't know me. Nobody knew me whatsoever. So she Incredible. took me to her. She took me to her uh, 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 her cathedral, her big, she had a big mansion, two acre tiff green yards, bath ponds, rock bath ponds, a 50 yard uh, cobblestone lined by rose bushes, you know, and you go inside this cathedral ceiling and she says, uh, the, says the, uh, in the old days, Eric, she said, the women made sure they were behind the scenes, says they made sure the right young people met the right leaders. Now that, she said, that's culture. Is that a marvelous story? That's wonderful. So I think someone so, was looking. Someone was looking out for you there, Eric. I, I'm so a big I, believer I, in the universe, God, however you want to call it. It goes to work for you and opens up doors. Now, um, I think because we only have so much time here, I think you might find your listeners might find it interesting to have an in-depth discussion of what it was like to live, do the correspondence, do the interviews, go to the private library room. I think you like, like like an inside look of what it was like to be with these two old great scholars. It was an absolute experience that in, I have the inside. So here it was. Most students, if they got one or two hours with him a week when, in a class of twenty people, they that's what they well, they lived to go there for that. I I had twenty hours. I he taught me four hours a day. He'd get up at five a.m. eat his trail mix. He'd hit the books even at eighty nine. He couldn't quit. Um, and then he'd teach me after I did interviews and correspondence. He'd send me to his library. He could lecture and write and speak in 12 languages. Incredible. He had a shoebox of 2,000 names 
uh, former students and leaders throughout the world, said, I have to keep in contact with them, culture creating and history making. History is not the study of history. He said, it's an additional history making today. Isn't that marvelous? Wow, that's neat. We, we, we did 700 personal Christmas letters. Incredible. It what a life, right? So I got to be around a consecrated man, one of the greatest all-time wow. and a lecturer. When they gave lectures, he, him and Dr. Homer, typically the class gave a standing ovation. That's how. That's where I learned to be a speaker, not from being on the motivational circuit. I learned it from those guys. I bet. Isn't that a marvelous story? Yeah. That's really neat. So what what is a lesson that you learned from, from Professor Bainton? Well, I'll just, you know, I always go, there's, there's multiple lessons, but I always go for the best at this moment, right? Yes. Okay. The, now this, he was uh, the great biographer of Martin Luther, as well as all of Christian, you know, Christian history out throughout and spiritual history. The biggest thing I'd say to you is that he said, look, the, uh, there's, there was a, uh, he says there was an event in church history, he said, that event in secular history he said that Nobody talks about, says you can't talk about it on campus, you can't talk about it either in the church or out. He says it's called the Great Divorce. He said it happened about 1880. He said it's a culmination, not so much a one a one time thing, but he says what happened is for the longest time the, the, the meaning of the word logos, the word or reason, uh, was also understood as not just a word, but as the word behind all words and the reason behind all reasons, the template. It was a concept, the template for all others. Now, I'm not, I don't want to be too arcane. What he said was, the standard in Christ, he says, that when you give people words, you give them a life. So he said the meaning of the cross for the church, one of them was, this is how much when I give you my words, I give you my three-dimensional life. And see how that matches up to Wittgenstein? You give your attention, you give your practice, you give your building. And he said, now, that's a universal principle. It's not a particular. Remember how you and I were talking about principles? Right. He said, this means that uh, it can't, the Word of God, believe this will get me in trouble, right? It's not the Bible, per se. It's, it's, it is the person that they say in the Gospels, and the Word, Christ, was made flesh. The point is, he said, now, what happened is the division was this. And certain people hearing this are going to be blown away and it will change their lives forever. Said there was a split between the evangelical right and the Protestant uh, academic left. Because most of the I believe were super still very, very spiritual. But they there was a there was a war between, well, do we really believe the Bible in its particulars or you know or not? And the Protestant left was leaving the that uh, and the evangelical right was horrified. So what happens, they, they, they split, and they never met again. So the universities went one place, and the Bible people went another place. But Roland said, it, now, on the, it looked like they're polar opposites, right? He said, but what happened is that both of them agreed that Jesus was, in fact, not a universal life and, and only, knew, only knew the Bible and religion. And this division... Broke. It, it says this is this will break the back of Western civilization because the word that held us together cannot be words on paper. There has to be a three-dimensional life who lives them, and then a community of people says what we're supposed to have is this: strong individuals, strong local bodies and families, and a strong united people with gifts in every sphere of life. Is that that is what the Nicene Creed is? That's what came out of Christianity. Says, and where are those people? So. We're talking about certainty. I'll, I'll just make this a great lesson. It's not, you cannot substitute documents or words or text for the people who live them. You have to have a population of people who live them. I couldn't agree more. You know, it's um, it's interesting as I interview guests from all over the world. I mean, I have interviewed your friends, uh, Sir James Gray Robinson and Sir James Dentley. And I have uh, Jay Levin coming up, who's uh, is your uh, is he your publisher, editor. your partner? Editor. He's my editor. He's your editor in uh, he's a marvelous book man. That's he, coming up. He, he see, and I are tight. See if you he's a wonderful man to work for. Work I'm, I'm I've, I've really enjoyed getting to know him, and I'm he's, he was the owner of uh, of uh, L.A. Um, L.A. Weekly. 
LA Weekly. Sorry, I had a had a brain block there for a minute, but he was the editor and owner of LA Weekly for many years. He's since sold it, but um fantastic man. And just so you know, if you're listening, um Eric has come out with several books. He has one called Quote Caffeine that came out at Christmas. It contains twenty thousand no, 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 no. I've written twenty thousand no, books, it, but that that book only has about seventy. <laughs> it has a it, sorry. It has examples from, but twenty thousand quotes that Eric has penned throughout his life, and you've probably done even more than that. But there's about seventy quotes in this book. It's called "Quote Caffeine," and uh, and there's more to it. "Quote Caffeine," the uh, um, I know there's a tagline that goes with that, but. Um, but you have a, you have another book coming out in um March, March twenty first, I, I believe is the goal. Jay is your editor, um, and in that book you talk about quantum intelligence versus artificial intelligence. I want to get into that topic after we take our break here. That's coming up, but but let's go back again a little bit and talk about um. Not just Dr. Baton, but um, but also Dr. Homer. Dr. Homer, right? Oh because yeah. He had a fundamental impact on you when it came to fundamental language and where you ended up really making your life work, your passion most definitely. And now, and now, what you're receiving so much attention for? Your, I know, I know you've been working on one. <laughs> you called it your uh, your uh, magnus opus there magnus opus right that you've been working on for 30 years that talks it's on this topic but um tell, tell us a little bit about uh dr homer because he's he's very respected in his field well dr homer was the greatest kirky guard and wittgenstein uh scholar in the world now there will be people who think they know wittgenstein better but Wick, he would always say, and we would talk. I'd drive him to Princeton, and we'd talk back and forth about language theory. As far as I could tell, almost no one else understood Wittgenstein the way he did, and I understood Homer in a way no one else did. That was kind of cool because I really had him to myself. Eric, in one define way. Eric. Define Wittgenstein if you can for those. Well, who are Wittgenstein was uh, the greatest, uh, the greatest philosopher of the 20th century, and he was famous for. Um, uh, for for his being a, a language theorist, and he and Kant are were on one side, and almost everybody else in the history is on the side of what I call symbolic language. So we have most of the world. Let's see if I can say it right here. And most people don't get this. They still they still try to make uh, Wittgenstein be symbolic, and he's not. He's trying to break out of symbolism. How would I say it here? Um, Okay, I'm a master builder, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, my When I make blueprints, my designs are not correlated to just more and more designs, right? I have to build something, right? Same way with my words. When I communicate to my, my, fr my framers and everybody, I can't get away with having just giving more words. There's a point where these words are correlated to three-dimensional building. Okay, that was both uh, Wittgenstein's point and he said symbolic language is like giving you a, a view to a view to a view. Now, the fun, one of the fundamental building blocks of Western civilization, you, you, ha, you can't let there be too big a gap between what you say and you do, what you do. Mm -hmm. So in our society in America, picture this. The, 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 not Plato, but the Platonists came to say a concept is, just, is a symbol. It's a general idea, a general. It's not a specific. It's a general idea, general image general intention with no connection to an inherited body of three-dimensional living to working body today or what happens in real time so try to picture this that's the definition of a symbol a concept is like a master builder i can think it i work on it and i can build it and complete it that's three a, a concept as kant and wittgenstein and homer meant it and said you know one great quote by homer was uh one generation's solutions become the next generation's problems and here's why interesting if, if you concentrate on just the thinking part and you don't do the working part you may solve some problems at first but now you'll have new problems for the next generation because they don't know how to work so well, you I see, see the yeah, yeah eric i see this with my salespeople, with employees that i've worked with over the years 
uh, you know, we talk about analysis paralysis. We talk about, you know, people uh, who are who are losing themselves in studying and preparing and, and planning, and they're not actually getting out and doing. It's it's one thing to have a concept in your mind. It's another to be able to communicate it. And then it's another to be able to actually go do it. You know, it goes That's back right. to your three steps, right? You have you have a the physical, you have a relationship, but then you have to have purpose. And as part of purpose, purpose is no good if there's no action, right? It's yeah, an it's idea, all- but if you sit in your in your room with your door shut and don't tell anyone about it and don't do anything with it, then what good is it? Well, now, uh, you know, uh, the quote, by the way, the 20,000 quotes are really not, not just loose quotes. They're going into a series called Education by Quotation. And why I say yeah. that is, is your language from your, your colleges has become symbolic. And what that means is you can have views and write papers about ideas, but no very few people in the in the uh, academic realm that's not true of top level researchers but but can get away with writing more papers and more views but when you send these kids out into the workforce part of the they're reason part of the reason not only they're unprepared but part of the reason that they um, look if you know how to talk and you know how to paint pictures but you can't work you don't work with solid working body okay now this is an enormous problem social media if you, the, the mind, now this is what I got from Homer. The, this was his particular angle. Mindsets uh, generate the actions that cause the consequences. So he says, if you want to know why things are happening, there are major mindsets. So between Roland Bainton's history and his language theory, I came to conceive of history as the advance and decline of major mindsets. And that's where we're no longer seen. When a person has a mindset so they habitually and characteristically do actions that go with their thoughts. Um, but this might be this might not be well-rounded actions. It may be particular or selfish actions, okay? Mm-hmm. But the point is you now are you now have something you can if a person is locked into a pattern where I always do just one, I think and talk or picture, but I don't work, one day you realize that pattern's a mindset. See what I'm saying? It is. Okay. It's a, it's a habit. One. It's a hollow habit, as I call it. Um, I'm going to catch. I'm going to cut you off, Eric, because uh, we're up against our break. Um, Thank you. Typically, we'll do two. We're just going to do one break today. Uh, we have a lot to talk about, and I want to keep the extra time. But hold that thought, Eric. We'll come right back to it. We're just going to take a quick commercial break, and uh, don't go away. We'll be right back. Thanks. Thanks. All clear. Back in about two minutes. I'm glad it's not raining on you today, Eric. You're, you've got till Monday till the this next storm hits. I hear. Yeah, uh, I, I don't, I don't, I suspect it'll hit today. I, I have to move a bunch of um, stuff out of the garage because it looks like it's coming. Yeah, you said you have. Hey, a... you're, you are a, a wonderful interviewer because um, you're an example of what I mean by giving real attention. I appreciate that. So, and, and and one of the things we talk about if we get into quantum intelligence, I'll, I'll 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 try to show how attention giving and uplifting people with energy, and it comes from you, and they can tell. And I said mm-hmm. that 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 attention is not just looking; it's it's a it's a palpable energy stream. And guess what? Your best language comes there. And so, when you're talking to someone, I, I can tell you're, you're. It's not just some people would say you're intelligent, and that's true. I'd simply say, more. you're really uh, engaged. I try to be. I try to be attentive. I had some good examples in my life. My my dad is like that. My dad is the most attentive conversationalist I've ever met, and he remembers everything, every person's name from years ago. He He's really, a, he's been really a great example. He's more social than I am. I, I refer to myself as a anti-social people person but you know, he uh he's really good at it well, well that's because a lot of people you're around tax you and when you meet somebody who brainstorms with you you don't walk away I'm maxed out you walk away oh wow energized that's right all right we're coming back here ready when you are jordan Three, two, one. You are listening to Finding Certainty with Patrick Lang. Have a question for Patrick or his guests? 
Join us on the show at 866-472-5790. That's 866-472-5790. Now, back to the show with Patrick. Welcome back to Finding Certainty. We're visiting with Eric Zender. He's a master builder. He's a master wordsmith and word expert, language expert, and quantum intelligence expert. In fact, he was recently cast in a movie that premiered about a, a little less than a month ago in Irvine, California. Uh, we were invited to come to the red carpet and, and be there. The film was called Beyond Physical Matter, and Eric was one of the experts tasked and recruited to be a part of that documentary. You said something really interesting just a few minutes ago, Eric, and I wanted to touch on it. You talked about how when two people are communicating and they have those three elements, they have the the physical, you know, they have the relationship, they're, they're, they're attentive, they're looking in each other's eyes, they're engaged, and if there's some sort of purpose to that conversation, those are the three pieces, but you you talked about how there is an actual energy between them, and I'm a firm believer in that. I think all things are energy. Uh, I've been a, stud, a student of energy and the law of attraction all the way back to Think and Grow Rich with Napoleon Hill and and the, and the Secret and so forth. And I know you have been invited into and become a part of this communities to the point that you were recognized as as a as a member of this this movie. Uh, and I know you're coming out with your book coming out March 21st is the goal where you make the claim that quantum intelligence is more powerful than even art artificial intelligence. Now, there's a lot of buzz about AI these days, but let's talk about that. T tell us a little bit about the book, if you would, and then let's let's drill down on this topic because AI is such a buzzword these days. And I think we are at danger of losing ourselves into AI. I think that might be a little bit of what you're getting at. But obviously, there's great potential with it, great ramifications. What are some of the risks, in your opinion? What do we need to well, do to um, make sure that it's uh, it's utilized correctly and that we're 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 making the most of it and not getting lost in it? Uh, you know, um, bear in mind that I'm writing a major book and it's coming out here, so the the amount of input we could put into what you just asked would be pretty pretty big so we have to kind of choose i will say this yeah. if, if you if you're watching this and you really want to understand uh entry level quantum okay go get the movie tell, let me tell you why it solves an enormous problem don and uh, uh don and melinda boyer motivate enterprises they've done 22 uh books and 15 documentaries this is the best and people are saying it's going to go as big as the secret uh here's why it solves the problem when I talk to somebody, and I'm a pretty sharp person, I have a lot of friends who own their own businesses. You know, I own my own business, so I'm well respected. Even so, when I explain the quantum and I explain where it's going and its enormous economic potential too, there just comes a point where they say, uh, "That's really interesting." You know, yeah, let's hear more. But I got to get back to work. So what <laughs> I'm saying is, is when you see 16 people and Don and Melinda talking. In one film, and it comes, it registers you like, oh, wait a minute here, this really is real. So I'm saying, you m most people you share quantum with will break off simply because they're busy. But if you get them to hear all these experts at once, they send, wow, wait a minute here, something's going on here. So this is something uh, as great as the discovery of North and South America has happened on our watch. Uh, think of like. Um, uh, let's say Christopher Columbus had a conceptual awakening uh, in his inner uh, life. That is to say, a single concept given to a single person turned out to lead you to great new frontiers. And that's like the first third. He had to think. He had to think out of the box. And, and when we say out of the box, he had to think in the box, too. He had to run a ship. He had to know how to navigate. But he also could think, should we go this direction when no one's ever gone that direction before? Uh, then we have a continent. That's where you learn to work with solid working body in many different spheres and different careers. And then imagine we come to, again, another ocean, and that's the quantum age. And the quantum age is, oh, everything's imbued with this quantum uh, energy, and it's not just energy we're discovering. So quite uh, quite obviously among us, there's, there's a clear language, resonancy, frequency, vibration, uh, we can feel your vibes. We can sense your attention. You're uplifting. It's light. 
It's, it's taking you up. It's, it's not putting you down. And the community is working really hard to give you the peer stuff. They're working really hard to not be crooks or people are just giving you something to, you know, make something off you. They're working really hard to clean the clean up and be the real thing. And they're being rewarded because they 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 can they they get healing. They feel love. We're it's it's a marvelous community to be around. It's an incredible uplifting and yeah, it's smart. uplifting. That's that's the word I thought of up, uplifting. It's a uh, when you associate and and surround yourselves by Doctor Dentley and and Don and Melinda and Doctor, you know, or Sir James Gray Robinson, and the list goes on, right? When you when you in, in, interact with these people, you come away feeling uplifted. You feel inspired to go out and do more, and and raise and lift those around you. And that's I, I think that's a good thing. You know, I do have a question for you. Sure. As a Christian, how does a Christian engage with and and understand the quantum the quantum um, arena and community? Because there's been a little bit of a a little bit of opposition, a little bit of uh, I think misunderstanding and disconnect between those two. They think it's foo foo or it's new age. It's out there, and I'm going to stay here and stay close to the gospel and my faith. Personally, I don't have an issue with it. I see it as faith in action. I see it as, you know, we we create things, we manifest things, and that is very, that is founded in eternal principles. But there is some disconnect there. So I'm curious to know. Well, your it's, on it's, that. it's a totally um, it's, it, from from most angles, it's an unnecessary disconnect. I agree. Uh, I, in the community itself, you typically hear people that the, the, the there are quite a few Christians in it who listen. Let's here. I, okay, before quantum theory, okay, uh, the the Aristotelianism was something like this. I, I mean, it wasn't quite this bad, but, but it was in a way that what's real is an external structure. So there was the thinking was for centuries it was kind of like what's between us, the space between us and this body, this this wall is nothing. Well, now we know. Wait a minute, it's filled with it's filled with anything. It's all kinds of things. Light. If I told you thirty years ago that. Uh, there's language, information flying through the air, and there's something called Wi-Fi could tap it. You say you're a nut, but it's there. Not only is there language in uh, in just the the Wi-Fi realm, there's language in the quantum realm. Now that's something that I am the forerunner, or the most large forerunner here. So see how I can say this to you. Um, uh, the logos, okay. It, 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 Remember I said about Dr. Holmes, that's what, that's what Roland Bayton said, this false break between great principles that are universal and, say, biblical scriptures is wrong. The tree is a person. And what that makes you, when you live as a three-dimensional person, you want to three-dimensionalize yourself, then you understand language. Okay? Then the language comes to you. If, you're, if your heart, if, see, in quantum, here's what they're saying, you have a central singular life force if no one is loving you and or giving you attention in a singular way or talking to you specifically to you you're not feeding and what will happen is there'll be a wall between your own inner energy your which caused your heart it's your heart and your mind and it's not get carried away here it is energy that's kind of our new language and its frequency and its resonancy but it's your heart and your heart we always knew that your heart's not you know your physical heart you you love to give attention. You love to talk. You love to be seen. You love to be talked to. Okay. Quantum says we've broken the tie between oral language and regular language. In oral language, there had to be people and relations. So and not only are you in relation to each other, you're giving attention to the landscape around. Does that make sense? You're giving attention. You take a hike of nature. You're connected to three-dimensional reality. So quantum is – now, this is where the new age is changing, Okay. Everybody in history, not everybody, but key people, both philosophers and theologians and saints and prophets, have touched what I call the river. Heck, the river by you know, uh, you know, different singers. You know, uh, I, 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 you think, but anyway, the, the, the river is what I. What here's what Christ and Christianity brought. Okay, that clarifies it. You not only have the river, you got to have the two banks. 
So the river is your internal life, your thinking, your giving, your 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 loving, your tissue. But your first bank is your human life, your human to human life. And no matter how good you are in your creativity and your energy, you have to be human to other people. Right. You have to What's have a up? physical body to experience cold and pain. There has to be opposition. There has to be, you know, I, I completely agree. So go ahead. Well, not just physical body, but you have to put body into your words. You, that's part of the meaning of the cross. That that's what that's what Roland Bayton taught me. Every word is to be pruned and then redeemed. Then we put body into it, and the answer is it's not just scripture, but words. It's every word, everywhere. So 100%. that's the you, okay. So, but the second bank is building greater enterprises in all spheres of life. Now that's a beautiful life, specific, solid, beautiful. Isn't that what everybody I wants? Love that. So remember, I love that. everybody listen to this. The river and its two banks are going to swallow just the river. And that's why they, people were telling me, um, Eric, um, you're going to come out of this the, leader, lead, the, the leading speaker on where quantum's going. Uh, because it is because I'm superb. I said, I, I used another model. They said, what's quantum like? I said, well, if you, the communications led age was like a, uh, it swallowed the standard business age like a, a whale swallowing a tuna. I said, the quantum is like an ocean swallowing a whale. And everybody's kind of gotten that. But that's really going to happen, my friends. Um, where well, I say one thing, Ganjing World, a uh, uh, division of uh, Epoch Times, is a big supporter of mine. Uh, mm -hmm. They've talked about hosting me in conferences. So you may hear me speaking pretty soon with national coverage. Uh, and um, they, they're, I, I, I always tell uh, people about Ganjing World, they reach about 8 million people, and they want to rival YouTube with really wholesome stuff. Mm -hmm. uh I, I just say that because they're they're willing to take this quantum message and spread it that's uh, so uh, that's that's really cool what's interesting so are, uh, the river and there's two banks if you if you don't just think about this for a minute you can't have a river if you don't have the banks you that's exactly right otherwise it's just a puddle right it's yeah um it's interesting i was talking with uh sir james just last week on our show and and you know he's he's uh He's a big believer in this. He was a cast member with you in the in the movie, and uh, we're doing really a focus this month on your film. I met, I, I interviewed uh, um, Tony Doty, you know, who's one of yeah, your Tony, yeah. producers and and so forth. But we we're talking about how science is starting to catch up too, because it used to be that I mean, I grew up hearing that you know your attitude determines your altitude and. I always thought that was a nice idea. And maybe if I had a good attitude, I'd work harder and you know, accomplish more. And But it goes way beyond that. And they have science and technology these days that can literally measure the speed of your thoughts, your, your brain waves. If you have a positive thought, it vibrates something like 10,000 times faster than a negative thought. And it literally has an and and a magnetic quality to it. It attracts into your life more of those things. I believe language is the same. Our language attracts to us different people, different relations, relationships, different uh, different opportunities, different vibrations, right? And and so I see a lot of uh, interplay between the language, the quantum realm, and energy. And it's it's nice seeing science catch up with that, right? They're starting to be able to not just conjecture or theorize about it, but actually prove that this is true. And so it's it's very interesting seeing where it's all uh, uh, unfolding. I, I can give you a perspective on that if you if you wish. Go ahead, but, uh, please. You may have you know. Okay. Well, um, gosh. Uh, okay, I say this. Uh, science studies matter to get answers, and quantum has largely studied energy to get answers, and I studied language for, for answers. Okay? Right. Now, Bob Dylan was asked, where do great songs come from? And he said, but they're in the air, all, all around us. He says, um, the answer, my friends, blowing in the wind. <laughs> now, uh, it's clear that he heard in a different bandwidth than most people, right? But sure. the language was there. So imagine singing, song. So he said, the songs are already there. And the words came. He heard it, what I call upper bandwidth. Now, Augustine writes about this extensively, upper bandwidth. But it's largely uh, 
a higher plane, third. right? Okay, so now we we lost the looking at language and where it comes through when somebody who loves you gives you language. We lost it. So science has become very uh, mechanistic. So Correct. the mechanistic view of science is very simple. There's nothing special inside you, neither uh, neither your energy or your mind, and you're just your physical body. Well, when quantum physics began to say, well, if we look at the super small, huh, it doesn't. It has physics, but not the same kind of physics as your material body. Well, then they began to measure so many things and so many uses. It became clearer and clearer. Wait a minute, quantum reality is not standard physics. It's not mechanized. But it is power, and it is list. But here's where it needs to go further. Dellen didn't just hear songs. Now think about it. something sings; it has vibrancy. It, the strings vibrating. It's your purpose. Okay. And he, by the way, he won the Nobel Prize for literature for his for his lyrics in 2021. He got lyrics really? right. I, I didn't know that. That's that's amazing. So so the it, the river never stopped, right? But for for Dellen, it was not just the song. He found language there. Now, I've found that by a huge experience, and that's why I'm able to talk about it so clearly. Imagine you go through a gate called the moment, okay? Uh, and it's the gate between, it straddles the straddles between standard physics realm and the quantum physics realm. On this side, you're, you're everything's in finite body. And in fact, you're, you have a specialized scientific mechanized mind, which could also be called a, a materialistic mind or a consumer mind if you want. But the point is, you're always thinking about finite bodies. So science was this huge force for thinking that way, okay? And what's happened since quantum is, well, wait a minute here. There is something, and it is not just material. It's beyond physical matter. And that's why what Don and Melinda are doing we're doing is so important. It really is going to take beyond the secret, because the secret is a wonderful thing, the wonderful film, and the law of attraction, all those things. But we're going to clarify it. There's not only uh, energy, it's intelligent. And intelligence means nothing if there's not language. And then all of a sudden, we begin to say, at the beginning of the universe, ah, ah, ah. Uh, so we have this period of time from the Big Bang to the inflation, right? Until So Einstein says, wait a minute here. The kind of time that we, is called ordinary time is quantified time, and it only exists where there's matter, and we're bouncing off comparing two matters. So what was there before then? Because there was clearly something happening that did this. And by the way, it packed that 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 uh, big bang ball. Now I'm the leader in this, my friend. So it may sound brand new what I'm saying, but imagine there's a precision principle, and that precision principle uses language, but it's a pure language. It's not it's not Babylonian. That pure makes sense. Intelligence. So imagine I, I, now. I believe oh, that, and I I believe that Eric, I completely agree with you, and I think of it as pure intelligence that even yes. before we were created now i'm a christian yes. i believe that we yes. were created i believe that in god the whole story adam and eve everything that, got, that went with it and there's different interpretations and understandings but i believe that before we came to earth to gain a body and gain experience we were actually intelligences you know that we had that that intelligence existed we were then organized and we don't have to go there. I don't want to get. Oh no, no, I don't. I don't. I don't mind. I just, it's all going to dump it. But I want to say that science had now has a, a, a another butterfly wing here. In other words, it's no longer standard physics. But watch this for your people. I agree. No, go ahead. He, okay, one of my quotes is: "If you stay in the moment, you will always hit the moment." Okay, what, I love that. Okay. Um, you, so quantified time is this, which is we've all lived under, which is breaking down, or at least not breaking down, but being added to. Uh, you know how much you can get done in a year, right? How much you can get done in a month, right? How much in a, a, a day, a week, a day, an hour, a, a minute, and finally. But when you get to the moment, it's no longer clear what a moment is. It happens so fast, right? So if you give people moment-to-moment -moment attention, you cross that gate into the quantum realm. Now, here's the here's the wild thing. It, it uses language. So Einstein says if we go into that realm, the past, the present, and the future are not super divided. They're like all one part of a tree. They talk to each other. <laughs> so imagine that, as it were, God is inviting you to be in that conversation. And it, it, it backs prayer. 
you talk and it hears you yeah. and it plays back. So one of the things they did in quantum physics, they think that we go through that gate and the, the we, we talk from the present, but we, we also think of our past and then the future weighs in and the future is your story. And we think the future hears you, goes back across and changes the story you get. Isn't that? That, goes, that, right, I, that it, goes right in line with <laughs> manifestation, right? It goes in yeah, line with the yeah. fact that we create things in our mind uh, mentally and emotionally before they ever become, be, before they're ever created physically. I mean, that's all part of the law of attraction and so forth. But there's so much, uh, there's so much to that that while it's new to many people and and more and more people are learning it and understanding, there's there's it, it resonates right you hear it and it just makes sense it's like meeting that person that you've always been looking for and when you meet them you feel like you've always known them right it's i i was i i believe in many respects we're not discovering things we're remembering them we're we're peeling back the layers of that artichoke to get to the heart that's been right in front of us all the time so but you know when you uh, we talk about the law of manifestation like it it, it does it has sounded somewhat like this uh, in some places, I, you know, I, I craft an idea in my mind. I keep focusing on that, you know, uh, and it, it develops, you know, as a baby body, right, over time. Mm -hmm. But maybe it would be helpful for some people to say, well, actually, there's an infinite, and we're just barely scratching infinity. Um, and you're Tip of the you're iceberg, putting, right? <laughs> so, so what happens is, is your words are going up. Now, here's what I tell people: it's like Columbus. If you're new to this, it's not going to happen. It, you'll get raindrops, okay, but you won't get the the river unless you stay with it, and you literally have to like it's like Plato. You have to get out of Plato's cave. Plato's cave is where all your words are defined by finite body, or by shadowy things, or by pictures. So I you see. have to get out of that. Now watch, this is really germane for you. You you want to help people give people certainty in their lives change, right? So go back to Plato said you have to pilgrimage out of that and you have to look upwards beyond finite bodies as what happens is listen he hit language too so 80 percent so he create plato does this he goes to the river and he uh 80 percent of all philosophy uh, 90 percent is a footnote to plato he creates um the field of philosophy he writes the republic he, he you know uh, which which is rock uh, rock hard you know bottom for um you know, the world today. So sure. eighty percent until about forty years ago, eighty percent of all words in our dictionaries are influenced or actually from Plato. That's a river. So guess what? In his own way, Dylan hit that river, and I can tell you one: Emerson hit that river. Ralph Walter Emerson hit that mm -hmm. river. He wrote four thousand pair. He wrote 4,000 of the greatest epigrams and then the finest essays. For that, he's generally considered the greatest of American writers and the third greatest writer in English history. My point is this. You get great new language and great new concepts from this quantum river. Think of that, that all of us. It, so, But remember, it's like Columbus. You're going to have to sail across the Gulf. And mm -hmm. imagine, too, this is the reason for the 20,000 quotes, and God gave them to me because they're, they come from that river. They come, so imagine that when you're doing the internet and things, okay, when you're, it's bombarding you with language that takes you segways. Sometimes it's people who just think but don't do. Sometimes it's people who do limited things but don't have any purpose. And sometimes you have grand people who you know don't do the other two. <laughs> so imagine we need a language that just keeps our mind going. And the whole quantum community and uh, is dedicated to doing bringing us that language. They are, They're and, all dedicated to it. And to your point, I agree. Uh, well, I don't know about the whole community, but I think well, okay. the growing, the, growing uh, le the leaders in that community, people like Don and Melinda and others, yourself and others. But I, I was going to say, it is when you tap into that, when you take the time to understand it and start dipping your foot in that river and start start seeking to understand is when... I think he's, you touch greatness. I mean, people yes. who did and have, like Dylan, like Emerson, like others, you know, they're, 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 
icons now. They're right. They're remembered and always will be. And so, Eric Sender, I think you'll be one of them. But we are we are up against the end of the show. Uh, is there is I know your book's coming out on the twenty first. Please share the name of the book real quick so people can look for it. Yeah, Quantum Intelligence versus Artificial Intelligence. I'm looking forward to reading it, my friend. Is there uh, any way? There's, someone... there's, 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 there's... Oh, I'm sorry. Go on, sir. Anyway, if someone can find you, do you have a website or anything? Oh, yeah, like... yeah. If I got it, just call me, you know, Eric Zender on Instagram and also Eric Zender, Quantum River World. Quantum right. River World. And uh, hey, let me say one little thing for you, okay? Okay, what, go fast. This, this language in the quantum realm is the quantum and what, what the early church called spirit, what we call quantum is awful, awful close. The, what the, That's what Roland Bainton said. The logos is is that word it's a living word in conversation so it's directly connected to uh trinitarian thinking that's good to that's hear a wild thought. i think if more people understood that there would be more synergy we could link arms and we could accomplish a great deal of good so yeah thank you thanks yeah, for being wonderful. on the show today eric and thank you for listening to finding certainty uh come back next week we'll have another guest we're gonna have uh Eric's editor, Jay Levin, who's going to be a fantastic interview. Have a great week. We appreciate uh, you being here and following us. Have a great weekend, and uh, we'll see you next week. All clear. Great show. Thank you, Jordan. No problem. Hope you both have a great rest of your day. You too, my friend. So, Patrick, you were wonderful. You You're a wonderful person. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. We, the YouTube is still recording, so if there's anything else you wanted to add, we can add it down to the end of the YouTube video. And uh, uh, I can tell kinda... you a story that will reverberate, but you know, you yeah, want to hear ahead. stories? Or... Go ahead. So... I always tell people on the YouTube they get some behind the scenes uh, views and, and insights. So, well, okay, this story um, is uh, maybe turned out to be one of the great stories uh, of all time. In 2006, I felt called to go on a 40-day prayer and fast vigil, and uh, uh, church people said, well, we think you're supposed to do that, and I did, and I, and, um, I spent three weeks on the coast of California and three weeks up in the Grand Tetons, uh, and I wanted something special to happen, like an, uh, an Indian brave seeking his visions. I wanted to know about the Trinity, and I wanted to know about the Logos, and I wanted to know what the relationship between quantum and spirit was, so I, you know, I Pretty smart kid, so I want, but I was spiritual. I wanted to know. Yeah, you now, went with some uh, clear yeah. objectives. That's great. So two th two things to call attention to us. One is something did happen on the very first day. I wrote fifty what you'd call quotes, proverbs, epigrams. Now I'd written in that style for years, but to do a good quote, maybe a really good one, if you get one or two a week, yeah, that's pretty well, good work. And I, I may have had as many as five a week, but very rarely. I got fifty. Well, it didn't stop. Uh, the last two days, I wrote 500 quotes each day. I wrote 4,000 <laughs> sayings in four, 40 days. Now, for comparison, for anyone listening, only two great writers, Solomon, King Solomon, and Ralph Waldo Emerson, have written as many as 4,000 quotes for their life. It took them 40 years. I was able to write it in 40 days, to condense 40 years into 40 days. And that was when my quantum, oh, wow, quantum is here, and it has language, just like Dylan said. So and I said, I said that's, so look, that's really if, I cool. was, if I'd done a loose, you know, visions, they'd say you're hallucinating. If I said, if I'd done miracles, they'd say, oh, you're a hoax. I said, okay, you just have to read. <laughs> and here it is. And uh, I'd love, you know, so that's where the, the quote caffeine and all these books are coming from. But uh, but on two days, I wrote down what I called trios of traits. They just came to mind. I, I also had 40 straight spiritual dreams for 40 straight nights and wrote them down. Marvelous story, right? And the Lord said, uh, and I was, I'd been, over the years, I'd be offered a lot of money. And I'd keep on writing. The Lord said, no, you're to release them in, a, in the year that America and the world's in its shakiest year. And that's this year. So, uh, but on the trios of traits, hear this, guys. So I wrote down 100 trios of traits that amplify the Nicene Creed and the Trinity. Listen to these. Attention, action, art. Oh, okay, that's the three things. Body, no, being, body beauty, creativity, concrete, complete, direction, uh, discipline, destiny. Uh, I love um, that. Energy, equip, elevate, focus, follow through, finish, honor, health, hope, 
it goes uh, it goes through the whole alphabet. It's a sign. All these, if you want to know what the Trinity is like, add up the words in the first column. It's like creativity. It's energy. It's life giving. Singular. What's the sun like? Well, he carries on uh, the first, but he adds to it. Practice, discipline, service, help. What's the Holy Spirit like? Well, the Holy Spirit proceeds forth from the Father and the Son, adds to them. It's got to be fruit. It's got to be beautiful. It's got to be building. It's got to be path. Isn't that kind of a, so you end up with specific, solid, beautiful. That, isn't that what everybody wants? They do. So they there's the in their story. lives, and most people, good people, want it in their character. They want it in, they want to become those things. That's really neat. I love that. I, okay, I, well, I believe, I mean, I've had experiences in my life, Eric, where I felt like intelligence, pure intelligence was flowing into my mind. I mean, I had a, like a conduit was opened up and I was just receiving personal revelation. And it sounds like that was your experience during that. I, that I think what's happened with quantum uh, is that what we thought was like a feeling or, uh, you know, what you call, you know, re it resonant. It's also, well, wait a minute. It, it, when you go to the super small, we discover there's a quantum river. It is, it is movement. It is forward movement. It is a so there's and it's infinite. So yeah. then we come back to if you touch the conduit, why don't you say this? How much more could we do? And the answer is above and beyond all you can think and imagine, which has yeah. got to be big hope in the world that the least person can tap this. I agree. That's what I love about it. It's the great equalizer. Yeah. So. uh I hope you'll tell that story, and I hope people. I, I hope people. It's it, sometimes it sounds like so much, and some for some people they think, well, it's just quotes. Well, it's not that. It's it's a language. So you know, I'm a builder, so I have to think, work, build. Think about it. Every quote, as though it's small, is a little building. I have to think. Hmm. I have to work on the body of it. I have to make it complete. So what's mm -hmm. so important about these four thousand sayings is that they they're. They come from that quantum life. They're not symbolic, which means just thinking. They're not legalistic, which is, means just doing the middle. And they're not tyrannical, which means just giving orders. They teach you, like nature, to, to, to be a creative identity, to put on body, to reach fruit. Well, you think about this, Eric. You, you talk about think, work, build. Yeah. It's just another way of saying that you create it in your mind. The work is the relationship. You're putting it into. It, you're working on it. You have a relationship with the subject, the topic, the the, the project, the people you're working with to make it happen, and then to build. There's your purpose, right? So there's yeah. your physical, your relationship, and your purpose. <laughs> it's beautiful, isn't it? It really I love is. That. Yeah, and you know, I was listening this morning. I listened to a commentary every morning, and um, he was talking about Christ and how, you know, we we have this image that we're, we're trying to cross this chasm to get to eternity, to get to Christ. And, and we think of it as a rope, uh, but it's really not a rope. It's a chain. And, 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 you know, we break the links of that chain when we sin or fall short. And, and, you know, we're never going to, it's going to happen for all of us. We all fall short. Right. And yet Christ, he, he has a chain that is unbroken. It was the only perfect chain. And he comes over and says, don't hang on to that broken chain. Don't try to do it on your own. He says, hang on to me. And my chain is perfect. And I'll help you cross that chasm. And and to your point earlier, when we realize that he is the life and the bread and the water, he's everything. You know, if we focus on him, he is the he's the language. He's the purpose. He's all three of those. They practice the relationship, the purpose, all in one. Anyway, I no, yeah. no, 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 no. I would love it. I'm going to be doing a, a, a I have a book, but I'm not going to do it for about six months called Breaking the Code of the Cross. Yeah, I love and, that. And, and, and so what I argue, I think you're given what you're saying. And this is what Roland Bain and Talkman Homer taught me. And they, and they said, Eric, Yale's already becoming Marxist. He says, we can find fewer and fewer students can, who can hear. We're like from the old, old school. We're old mm. Christian scholars. Um, but, uh, I thought that was interesting what you said about the academics versus the, the Episcopalian versus the Protestant. I I totally agree. I mean, the great divorce. But the way you described it was very uh, 
insightful. Well, we didn't hurt us politically, although we don't talk politically too much, but 70% of all leaders, politically and otherwise, came out of the church before the great divorce. The evangelicals were so horrified by um, the, the academic left because they were saying, we don't believe in Jesus, we don't believe in the Bible at all. So they sold all their universities and turned them into Bible, Bible studies. Now, this is a real error, my friend. It sounds like, oh, the, ask, just ask me, what's the word of God? And you know what most people say? The Bible, right? Bible, right. You but should be not. saying, no, it's Christ it's the Christ. Logos. Now, right. think about this. This is Wittgenstein's point. You can't divorce language from a three-dimensional person giving you attention, relation, and edification. You cannot, right. Yeah, so the goal here is not to get Bible quoters. Although there's a place to fulfill those words, the goal is to three-dimensionalize them. Hmm. I love that. Grab the chain, the chain, the unbroken chain. And anyway, we could go on and on, but uh, really well, you, you're, but you, if you ever find this enjoyable, you know, uh, uh, I'll, I'll share with you at length that this is what I feel my calling is, is to Malachi 4, 6, return the heart of the elders to the youth and the heart of the youth to the elders. My quotes are really an attempt to do that. I love that. One of my favorite quotes. Well, I appreciate you being on my show, Eric, and anyone who's watching this. I hope you uh, enjoyed it. I'm sure you gained some insights. I've been I've been thoroughly educated and inspired, Eric. So I really appreciate you joining me on Finding Certainty. And uh, let's continue the conversation. We'd love to talk to you more. And best of luck on your your new book coming out. As soon as it comes out, I'd love to get a copy and and read it myself. So oh, absolutely. Maybe, maybe I, we can yeah. do a follow-up uh, session in April or so about the release of the book and, okay. and uh, drill down more on that topic. That would be great. Oh, okay. I, haven't, I haven't had very many guests on my show twice. I could count them on one hand, but would love to have you come back maybe uh, after it releases and we can talk more. Okay. Well, say hello to Jay when he comes on. So God <laughs> bless him. Okay. I will, will do. Have a, great, have a great weekend, Eric. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Okay. Take care.